guys. Have a seat. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Publics Act, Meetings Act, excuse me, pursuant to the Public Laws 1975. Said notice was advertised in the Asbury Park Press and the Beacon and was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and place of the meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First on the agenda tonight is a proclamation for the Neurofibromatosis Awareness Month. I've got to get that word one of these days. <laughs> NF. Yeah. Whereas the Children's Tumor Foundation is observing May 2024 as Neurofibromatosis NF Awareness Month to educate the public about this rare genetic disorder. And whereas, although over 2 million people around the world are living with NF, and one in every 3,000 births is diagnosed with NF, it is still relatively unknown to the public. And whereas NF affects all populations equally, regardless of race, ethnicity, or gender. And whereas NF causes tumors to grow on nerves throughout the body and also can affect development of the brain, cardiovascular system, bones, and skin. And whereas this disorder can lead to blindness, deafness, bone abnormalities, disfigurement, learning disabilities, disability, pain, and cancer. And whereas the Children Tumor Foundation leads efforts to promote and financially sponsor wor world-class medical research aimed at finding effective treatments and ultimately a cu cure for NF. And whereas the Children Tumor Foundation is actively fo fostering collaboration partnership in both science and industry to speed the drug research and development process through a number of custodian called I don't say it wrong, Zynodes, Zynodes. and whereas the Children's Tumor Foundation works to improve access to equally patient health care through its national NF clinic network. And whereas the Children's Tumor Foundation provides patient and family support through its information resources, youth programs, local chapter activities, and whereas much remains to be done in raising public awareness of NF to help promote early diagnosis, proper management and treatment, prevention of complications, and support for research. Now, therefore, to be resolved that I, Peggy Sue Giuliano, Mayor of Lacey Township, do hereby proclaim in recognition of this important initiative to hereby proclaim the month of May 2024 as Neurofibromatosis NF Awareness Month. Can I get my little Jackson to come up? Next on the agenda is Holtec Quarterly Update. Please. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Jeff Dalston, I'm Site Vice President down at Oyster Creek. I've um, been there for 40 years, as Pete always likes to talk, make sure I've uh, been there. I meant to be there for two years and love Lacey so much. <laughs> here for 40. So. Yes. I'm here for 40. Um, I have to report it's pretty boring. Everything is going as planned, pretty quietly, nothing uh, out of the ordinary. We've completed our reactor vessel internal demolition, um, and we're starting the cleanup so we could start the external demolition of the reactor <coughs> and basically take those pieces out. 
And just to let you know, that's 577 tons of metal that's going to come out of there. <laughs> so it's going to take some while, and we're going to cut it in small pieces and uh, take it out. Um, we took have about 60 buildings or structures that have already been demolished and taken down. The major ones are what's left, and we'll finish up uh, our new rad waste building in the end of this year, and then move on to the reactor and turbine buildings. We won't get into that major demolition until we get the reactor vessel itself out. Um, we have tied into city water, so our public water supply is now our drinking water supply. And then uh, we continue to work on that pipe. And that sets us up for any type of new infrastructure that we put on the site in the future. So we're thinking ahead also. Thank God, it's yep. not just looking at taking things apart. Mm -hmm. Thank Do you, you have a question? Yeah. yeah. The last time you were here, you pushed it back with your completion date to like 2030, which was the original date. Are we still on that time frame for 2030? Yes, sir, we are. Yes, okay. sir, we are. We're uh, completing up our <coughs> characterization, which is basically sampling of the ground, everything else, and the material that's on the site, making sure we're taking everything apart and what remediation we'll have to do with the site. That's ongoing now. We're also submitting our uh, license termination plan that'll be submitted in July to the NRC and the state. Um, so that's also on track. We've already worked with both the state and the NRC to get their input. Um, if you look at the industry in a whole, you look at Crystal River, you look at Vermont Yankee, um, most of the sites, when they submit that plan, they've been rejected. And it's taken up to two to three years to get that all together. Based on the work that we've done ahead of time, I expect to get that plan back in a year and basically authorized. So, again... We're making good strides, mm -hmm. um, industry standards and above. So basically, we're looking at efficiencies. Anything we can do, um, we take the best ideas that people have, we merge them, and we use that metal waste creek. So it's working out well. I know that you're trying to reopen the plant out in Michigan. Any chance of reopening Oyster Creek? Excuse me? <laughs> I saw in the paper you're trying to reopen the plant in Michigan. Yes, sir. Restart it up. Yep. Any chance would that happen here in Lacey? No, sir. We're too far <laughs> down the road. Sorry. <laughs> well, I thought I'd ask. Now, we, still, we still keep talking about uh, basically small modular reactors okay. doing that. Right. Um, we are talking about to a number of different companies, uh, hydrogen generation, battery production, wind, solar, different types of wind, not the big turbines you see offshore. These are small generating turbines that are close to the ground solar panels that are different and unique. So again, we're looking for green things and my my thoughts are to turn Oyster Creek into a green energy park and basically repurpose all that property. That's it, a wonderful test. There was a long article on Bloomberg.com about whole tech with well, this week. So sorry, there was a long article on Bloomberg Bloomberg.com on whole tech. Uh, I thought it was uh, very interesting and uh, painted whole tech in a pretty good light I thought. We like that. <laughs> Any other questions? I don't want to take up too much time. Go ahead, go ahead. I, wanted, I wanted to uh, commend you. I know that several Fridays ago we had a uh, about what amounted to a, a 4.8 so-called earthquake. It lasted just a few sure. seconds. Mayor Giuliano got out ahead of it uh, immediately, spoke with your organization as well as uh, Administrator LeRae, so I appreciate all the work um, to just immediately um, put forth a statement. We appreciate that from a point of public health and public safety, that everything was fine, nothing was touched. And um, again, it's that level of communication that we've enjoyed back and forth over the years. I appreciate that personally as a, a having a family here in town for many, many years and thanking uh, publicly yourself, Mayor Giuliano and Administrator Ms. Lorette. I raised my family in Lacey. Yeah. I understand everybody's concerned. They know about the nuclear power plant. Our policy is open and honest communication, so any questions you have, my phone's on 24-7, so just give me a call, and as soon as we have a change or something that I think you're going to be interested, you will get that call. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Really appreciate it. One last thing. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. The report thing. <laughs> <Mark. laughs> <laughs> so it's our honor to basically represent Holtec and 
and we really appreciate all, everything Lacey has done for us and our way of giving back to you and the community is to present this check for ten thousand dollars to for the Lacey Park. Appreciate it. Thank you very Thank much, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She won't even let me touch it. Them and I just dropped myself. Didn't even let me touch it. <laughs> let me touch it. <laughs> Want to take a picture with the chest? Doesn't have my name. Hey Mags, do you put this in your trust account? I have no idea. That's a big name question. Jim, does this go in the trust? All right, so you can take that and put that in the trust then. Down yeah, I know they're starting a new road trip. I usually kind of do this, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I gave it to Jim, though. I did turn over. It's, got, it's going into the trust. <laughs> Good night, Sue. Good to see you again. Good night. Take care. <laughs> okay. Next. A uh, special use permit for Lanoka Harbor EMS Cadet Bonfire <coughs> Event on 6-8-2024. Lanoka Harbor EMS is seeking permission to host a fundraiser cadet bonfire. This will take place at Deerhead Lake Beach. It will be on June 28th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And they have a rain date scheduled for the following Saturday. Move it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, special use permit, Lacey Christian Assembly Church Car Show, 6-15-2024. Lacey Christian Assembly Church is seeking permission to host a car show on Saturday, June 15th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. in their parking lot, which will include a pop-up tent and a food vendor, and they are also requesting permission to post two small signs at the front of the lawn of the church. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Special use permit, Lacey Pet Supply Customer Appreciation Day, 629 2024. Lacey Pet Supply is looking to host an outdoor customer appreciation event on June 29th. Their rain date would be June 30th, and this event would consist of a 10 by 10 pop up tent, a food vendor, and a face, pa face painter and recreation for kids. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Request to post signage Rotary Club of Forked River Doggy Derby event. The Rotary Club of Forked River is hosting their annual Doggy Derby event. It will take place on June 2nd from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at J Jones Field Park. Um, they are seeking permission to post lawn signs around town for about a week prior to the event to promote it. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Last thing on the agenda here is the discussion of the roller hockey rink conversion to a turf field. Okay, so the Lacey Soccer Organization has approached us with regards to, and I'm going to say the middle rink. So you have the skate park, the middle rink, and then the uh, other park. Um, roller hockey no longer has been using it. We've reached out to them several times. They have not um, got their league back together yet, and, uh, and it's not going to happen. So uh, Lacey Soccer mm -hmm. wanted to know at their expense if they can convert that rink to turf field. They would manage it. They would take care of it and they would utilize it. And of course that field also has lights, so that would give them the availability to have an additional field and additional lights for um, out nighttime um, games and stuff like that. So um, Mr. Cartolo and Mr. McDonald were both with me in that meeting when we had it, so I don't know if they had anything else to add to yeah, that. Yeah, that, they're gonna pick up the tab for the whole thing. Um, they understand that in the event something moves forward with that piece of property from the township, that it will be destroyed and, and um, that, you know, they'd be out the money um, before we go forward. I have no problem with this whatsoever. I would, I encourage all recreation clubs, if they want to build something or do something with their own money, why not? Um, it, 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 takes, it takes a burden off, the, off of this committee uh, to, to keep up with a facility so that our kids can have uh, a good uh, recreation soccer club there. So that's, that's all I have. Deputy Mayor? Yeah, I'm in lockstep with that. It was a good meeting. It was productive. If somebody's going to come up and do a value add for our town with their own money, uh, with monies that they garner from their club, private membership, people choose to join, uh, and it's physical activity as opposed to working out your thumbs, texting, or playing a video game, uh, I'm all for that. And uh, I, I, too, uh, don't see a downside. Um, 
it, it just appears to be a win-win, and I appreciate them stepping up and doing that for our kids that want to play soccer. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Kins? No. no sounds good. Oh. I just need a motion that authorizes um, me to let Lacey Soccer know that they can proceed with that. I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have a motion to adjourn. Unless Move there's it. any other items, anybody have anything? Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Adequate notice of this meeting has been given in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act pursuant to the public laws of 1975. Said notice was advertised in the Asbury Park Press and the Beacon and was posted on the bulletin board showing the time and place of the meeting. Please rise for the salute to the flag and a moment of silence. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Second reading of or Ordinance 2024-9, repealing Chapter 234, entitled Massage Establishments. Ordinance of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, repealing Chapter 234 of the Township Code of the Township of Lacey, entitled Massage Establishments, and issuing refunds for all licensing fees received in the fiscal year of 2024. Second reading, open the floor to public comment. Seeing none, make a motion to close it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Deputy Mayor Piratola? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Second reading of Ordinance 2024-10, amending an ordinance of fixing and determining salary, wages, and compensation. Ordinance of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, amending an ordinance entitled an Ordinance of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, affixing and determining the salaries, wages, and compensation of the officers, employees, and members of the governing body of the township. Second reading, open the floor to public comment. Seeing none, make a motion to close it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024-128, calling for the modernization of the Open Public Records Act. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, calling for the modernization of the Open Public Records Act and the swift passage of Senate Bill 2930 and Assembly Bill 4045. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curatolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024-129, certifying that the governing body has received the 2023 audit. Resolution in the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, certifying to the local finance board that all members of the governing body have received the annual municipal audit for the year 2023. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curatolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024. 4-130, awarding a contract for lead-based paint inspection services. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, awarding a contract for lead-based paint hazard inspection services to Lou Environmental. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curatolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024-131, authorizing the employment of seasonal employees. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the employment of seasonal employees for the Recreation Department. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024-132, appointing members to the Environmental Commission. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, appointing Stephen Kennis, Thomas Ball, Jr., and Catherine Callahan as regular members to the Environmental Commission for the Township of Lacey. Move it. Second. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. <laughs> Resolution 2024-133, appointing a regular member to the Environmental Commission to fill an unexpired term. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, appointing Michael Dalton as a regular member to the Environmental Commission for the Township of Lacey. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. 
Resolution 2024-134, authorizing the release of maintenance bond for Railroad Avenue Extension Phase 2 project. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the release of a maintenance bond posted for the Railroad Avenue Extension Phase 2 project. Move Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curatolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024-135, authorizing the release of maintenance bond for the former Knights of Columbus Building Site Improvement Project. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the release of a maintenance bond posted for the former Knights of Columbus Building Site Improvement Project. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curatolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024-136, authorizing the release of maintenance bond for the Bamber Lake Basketball and Tennis Court Reconstruction Project. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the release of a maintenance bond posted for the Bamber Lake Basketball and Tennis Court Pavement Reconstruction Project. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curatolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024-137, authorizing the release of performance guarantee for the Warden's Oyster Pond Dredging Project. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the release of a performance guarantee for the Warden's Oyster Pond Dredging Project. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curatolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. <coughs> Resolution 2024-138, authorizing the release of a performance guarantee for the road opening permit number 4974 and 4971. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the release of a site improvement performance guarantee for road opening permits number 4974 and 4971. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curatolo? Yes. Mr. Kenneth? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024-139, authorizing the refund of deposit monies. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the refund of deposits held for the use of municipal facilities. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution 2024-140, authorizing the payment of township bills. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the payment of township bills. This is in the amount of $11,385,650.69. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curatolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Resolution. Mr. McDonald, you have to abstain oh, on. I keep forgetting about yes. it. Let me abstain on T0035. Thank you, Veronica. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Resolution 2024-142, authorizing the ex ex execution of an agreement with LFA 3 Urban Renewal <clears throat> for Block 1837.1, Lot 8.8. .8. Resolution of the Township of Lacey, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, authorizing the execution of an agreement with LFA3 Urban Renewal, LLC. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Monthly reports. Municipal Clerk's Office for the month of April collected receipts in the amount of $7,679.39. The Municipal Court for the month of March collected receipts in the amount of $14,121.76. Road opening permits were, for April were in the amount of $5,678. Recycling commodity in the amount of $1,728. Truck parking in the amount of $12,500. And Municipal Docks collected receipts in the amount of $61,620 for the month of April. And for the month of April, the Department of Community Development collected receipts in the amount of $53,127. Motion to accept the reports is read. Move it. Se second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion to approve caucus minute meetings from April 25th, 2024. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Abstain. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Motion to approve township minute meetings from April 25th, 2024. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Abstain. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Motion to approve executive session meet minute meetings from April 25th, 2024. Move it. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Motion to approve membership in the Noka Harbor Volunteer Fire Company for Joseph admission. Move it. Second. 
Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Giratolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. Motion to approve auxiliary membership for the Noka Harbor Volunteer Fire Company for Trinity Clark, Crystal Connedy, Morgan Concello, and Anne Marie Forde. Moving. Second. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Caratolo? Yes. Mayor Giuliano? Yes. That's it. That's it. Okay, comments from the committee. Deputy Mayor? Thank you, Mayor. I uh, want to start out and conclude with some good news this evening. Um, as you know, along with Committeeman McDonald, uh, he and I have been uh, the liaison and the co-liaison for a great many years to our Lacey Recreation Department. Um, it, it's continued to grow. Uh, in particular, um, we all have different things that we're proud of about it, whether it's the, uh, the opportunities for young people or the farm market. Uh, but in particular, uh, my, my own personal is uh, the summer camp. We should eclipse maybe 500 children this year. Um, so they're watched on by, of course, we have uh, our staff, some of whom are in the audience tonight, unless they stepped out. They left, yeah. Okay, but still in all, I deserve credit for that. Um, so this is uh, $175 uh, if you uh, sign up early, $225 after June 26th, ages 5 to 13 years old. Your children are never alone. They're never just put in a park. The camp park locations are Kloon Park, Hebrew Park, Huffy Wallace Park. Um, they're with students who uh, care about these children and organize activities for them. Uh, these camp counselors have to pass a, a, uh, be involved in a safety course as well as a course on bullying and how to recognize it. Uh, so this is a real value add for our community. It helps parents that have to go to work. Uh, the the Wibbit, uh, our above water water park, I know that uh, Community Member McDonald uh, and I were down uh, several years ago at the League of Municipalities, uh, along with other good people on our committee. Uh, that Wibbit has long since been paid off and it generates over $100,000 a year for our town keeps our kids busy, and so many other towns are now trying to emulate it, but they simply don't have the lakes that we have. We have three. We're the only municipality with three uh, Bathing Beach Lake locations that are staffed with lifeguards. Uh, so other municipalities and all of the other counties uh, bring some of their kids down here to engage in WIBIT activities for their summer camp and field trips. Uh, so I would encourage people to call uh, James or any of his staff, 693-1100, extension 2203. If you have questions, uh, this is available. Uh, we communicate a lot on our, our Facebook page. Uh, please reach out to Administrator LeRae. Uh, and anyone that you could see here will help you, uh, including our rec department. Uh, and that information is easily available online, too. We really do a lot with, with not that much funding. I'm proud of those folks. Uh, so marine science camp, uh, trips, to, uh, junior lifeguard, magic, magic academy, age appropriate, Zumba, things for everyone from our seniors to our school children. It's a lot to be proud of. Engage in it. It's yours to use. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you. Mr. Kennis. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to congratulate uh, VetWorks on their reopening. They, uh, this past Saturday was their, their, their grand opening at their new location. Uh, adjacent to the food bank um, and they did a, they did a great job with the space that they were provided it's a I think it's a real benefit to them um, to have that location those are my comments thank you Mr. McDonald thank you, <clears throat> thank you Mayor uh, I too that works was down there on Saturday it was spectacular they're happy um, it's a great place for them to be and uh, we go forward from there and my favorite one of the, of the, of the, is the farmer's market, which is the first one is set to be, where is it here? May 24th, so it's right around the corner. Uh, I, my wife and I usually go there on a Friday afternoon, and we spend way too much money. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, what else do I have here? If, if you're trying to reach Veronica, and she seems a little hurried and so forth, it's because the Websites have been open for the $6 million that we're getting from the federal government to continue with Railroad Avenue. Uh, I was talking to her, and it's like four or five different websites, and she has to check them every day. And if you have to send an email, you have to have certain headers on it and so forth. So she's trying to take care of that, and that's real important to the town. Um, Bamber Lake, I don't know if anybody's been out there to that park. We spent a lot of money, and we're not done out there. we got to finish up the dam. 
So I would encourage you to use that park. It's, it's as good as any park that we have. And let me tell you something, not, not a whole lot of people use it because they don't know about it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So, Mayor, that's all I have. Mm -hmm. Did any, either one of you from Recreation, did you um, announce about the beach badges that are on sale? Oh, no, I did not. Okay. I just, I just because he put this in front of me and I didn't want to forget to say that um, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, you can get badges. Um, and, and again, he did mention about the um, market starting on the 24th. Um, we also have a rabies, free rabies clinic on Saturday, June 8th from 10 a.m. to 11 and that'll be back here at the Municipal uh, Public Works building back there. Um, I, did, I did meet with our local EMS, and um, it was just nice that they shared this with me. They were over and did a program over at um, Seabreeze Community, and uh, so Seabreeze puts out a nice community uh, flyer, I'll say it uh, that way, for their development there for everyone to read, and, and some of our folks got their picture taken in the flyer. So it was really nice to... Another proud moment for Lacey, as they say. Um, I wanted to just mention that I have, every month I get them reported to me on how many calls our fire companies go out for. And just in the month of April, they went out for 25 calls, fire calls. And, and I think that might be just Fork and Rivers. Well, I, I, I have four that belong to okay. 61. So okay. I, yeah, okay, you know, so I'm now just, you're getting both right, then. Okay, yes, perfect. So, um, but you, you, you got to take that into consideration. These people are working and leaving their job to go take care of a responsibility that they take true to their heart. So again, anytime you see a fireman, they're volunteers, thank them. It's very, very important to make sure they know we appreciate them. That's very important to me. Um, and just on a little note, in speaking with my public works a couple times this week on different things that have been going on, and it's not for the folks that are sitting here. Um, it's just to say out loud. They go and they cut the lawns and they try to make our parks look pristine, which they do. We have beautiful, beautiful parks. But if people aren't picking up after their animals, um, or here's one, I had pictures sent to me of people picking up their dogs left and left it in a bag and just set it on the ground. So, you know, it's terrible. It really is. It should not be that way. We have garbage cans all over the place. Take care of it. I have two dogs. I do walk them every day. I pick up. It comes back to my garbage can. It's just, you know, it's just the nature. Take care of it. So um, I think that's really all I have to say right now. I was at the, um, obviously we were all there. It was nice to have all of us there uh, at the uh, Vet Works. Uh, it was really a proud moment because they are just, I know it started out where everybody wasn't happy, but I have to tell you, these folks over there are thrilled. And if you have an opportunity, I know you folks stopped in. It was nice to see you there. Um, they would love you to stop by. They're there. And you can stop by and see their place, and you'll be thrilled about it. So it's, it's, they've done a beautiful job with our DPW working together to get it all the way they wanted it. So on that note, I open up the floor to public comment. Um, I just wanted to give kind of like a, an update on the Clean Up Lacey Day that mm -hmm. was April 13th. Mm -hmm. That was um, quite disappointing. Uh, I was here, like I said, at the other meeting and on Facebook, on Lacey Chatter many times. That I was going to be here in the parking lot from 9.30 to 10 to give out the bags and the gloves and the grabbers that you donated. Not one single person showed up. No one from here showed up. Um, I don't know why. Um, my mother and I went out and did one corner of Lacey Road and Railroad, and we got four bags of garbage from one corner. Someone with his kids went out and did Railroad Avenue, part of Railroad Avenue behind, I think, Home Depot. Um, and another woman went to the corner of Hollywood and Lacey by where she lives and cleaned up. The next day, I went from the first bridge on Beach Boulevard to the park by myself um, with a bag, and by the time I got to the park, I could barely carry it, and I only did one side of the street. I just walked that road, um, that same route on Monday, and I could do it all over again. I think we have a major garbage problem in this town. We are surrounded by lakes, like you said, rivers, the bay, creeks, it's windy. 
and it seems like the, the, everyone's passing the buck. You know, it should be the homeowner's responsibility or the business owner's responsibility. And then the towns, the people are saying that the public works should be doing it. But meanwhile, nobody's doing it. Um, well, there's just garbage everywhere. Right, I'm just going to interrupt you right there. Yeah. My public works goes out. They, that's I'm their sure job to go out to these lakes and water area, park areas, and they clean up every. I mean, I get pictures constantly of them showing me what they have to clean up. So I yeah. know that they're doing it. I'm okay? not saying they no, don't. And I get it. The problem is, is the people aren't taking responsibility. You, you saw how many people said they were going to meet you that day. I, I followed uh, I, the I, entire I, I, thing. I, it's horrendous. Hundreds of people. Yes, on that they side. all said they'd be here. Right, right. And the a rain date was announced. And right. I understand that it was opening day. But um, for no one to show up where, if you're here, even the farthest park, I don't even know if there's a baseball field at Bamber, yes. 6.4 miles, mm -hmm. it would take 10 minutes. So mm -hmm. anyone could have stopped here first, gone to their opening day thing, it would have been great for the community to see the town committee and other people um, participating in Lazy Cleanup Day. Mm -hmm. Not one person um, advertised it on their Facebook page. I did. All right, I didn't see it. Yes, okay. I did. I, I, there was nothing. It I got yelled at, actually. I got, I got like, yelled at by somebody because I, I advertised it. So about, disappointed, so. honestly. It was terrible. Uh, I'm not going to, I will do it again because I care. Mm -hmm. You know, but there is a garbage problem. The other day I was driving to work and I passed the garbage truck and I got two driveways down and there was diapers folded up nice like people do when you throw diapers away and something else in the street. So I pulled over and I said to the garbage man, are you going to go back and get that? And they said, no, they weren't. <laughs> That's their job. So I called the DPW. They said that they were going to call the supervisor. And that was the last I heard about that. The day I went to drop off the supplies, I asked them whatever happened. And they said, yep, they wound up going back and picking it up. But I mean, if the garbage man can't even take care of the garbage, like we got a problem. Mm -hmm. in this town. There's garbage everywhere, it's windy, and it blows everywhere. Just coming here, either side of 7-Eleven, the woods, full of garbage. If you go out the back way on Veterans Road, the woods are littered with garbage. I mean, that's a full day job mm -hmm. out there, just picking that up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm thinking we have a lot of organizations in this town, clubs, churches, synagogues, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Elks, Moose, you name it. I think we need to adopt a highway program like uh, the, the Lacey Elks can take that part of Beach Boulevard and once a month you know they have a lot of people I'm a member over there mm -hmm. you know go out and pick up like so many organizations in this town I think that that would be a great idea we could reach out to them not me personally I don't know any of them but you guys could maybe um, you know hey little league do you guys want to adopt this part of a highway Lacey Road you know go out with adults you know give them the grabbers, clean it up, because it's not getting done. Mm -hmm. It's just not getting done, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a shame. And when I told the DPW people that I was the one that called, they looked at me like I had two heads, like, oh yeah, she's the lady that called and complained. I'm like, well, you know what? I care. <laughs> mm -hmm. I care about this town. I've only been here two and a half years, but I care. Appreciate it. You know, so for them to tell me that they weren't even gonna go back and pick it up when they were two houses away was, pretty disgusting I mean it's like that's that's your job like I will look into um, putting something out to all the organizations I'll I think it's a great idea because mm -hmm. we keep passing the buck and it's not getting done right. yeah. and um, that cat Veronica was never picked up <laughs> you know I don't I never picked the up. one you're talking about by Mario's and you know I went by there twice and I yeah, never saw where it was there. that's because it disintegrated into the ground no I went to, I went when you no, had first no. pointed it out to you me you told me yeah. I yeah. called her right away because yes. I wasn't around yeah. so she went and looked and I could find it and it's, I did call the garbage company to say hey if you guys are in the area can you do me a favor and pick up the cat and they told me they couldn't see the cat so and I and again I'm driving by in a car so yeah. you're sitting up no, a little bit it. higher I you know so I did not see it but I yeah the mayor called me immediately yeah, yeah. No, it was never picked up. Okay, sorry. Um, and just one briefly, I wanted to. You know, we're talking about how beautiful the parks are here and what a good job they, you know, do and uh, mowing and all that stuff. Um, I called the Department of Public Works one day because after they put new mulch down at the Bayfront Park, I noticed that it, you know, it's the dark, dyed black mulch, not the town mulch. So I said, you know, why aren't we using? Our free mulch. Where do you We're get the mulch? We're not allowed to by insurance right. standards because it's not treated. 
We okay. actually have to buy. Do we really buy. want treated mulch, though? It's a certain type of treated that it has to be, and if it's going to be at parks and playgrounds where children yeah. are going to be, we're not allowed to use Even the. Even out front here, it's all Home Depot. It's all. It's not Home Depot. We do not oh, buy any. What, okay, DPW told me they. No, we're not allowed Depot. to buy it from Home Depot. Okay, that's um, what they told me. No, we do not buy it from Home Depot, and it has to be a certain type of mulch that meets our insurance standards because obviously okay. not Lacey's lawsuits, but there's been other lawsuits in the past where. Um, Families have sued towns because of using the free product that's not treated and might have, you know, might have glass in it, splinters, you know, not splinters, but glass in it and other products in it and stuff, and we have to use a treated type of mulch. Okay, even yeah. out front here? At all of our public areas. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems like a waste of money, but... I, I agree 100% with you. Yeah. Because we do do I mean, our own product. I mean, here we are at Bayfront Park, we're putting mulch down in an area where there is nothing. It's surrounded with, like, just an open area with mulch. But yes. Why don't we plant it <laughs> instead well, of mulch? Th that may happen. Just give <laughs> yeah. us some time. Yeah. That may happen. Yeah. We're still just looking. A, we're trying to coordinate idea. that vegetation I mean, it's meeting. It's kind of silly just to have an area surrounded by sidewalks full of mulch. Mm -hmm. You know. Anyway, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else that'd like to get up? Go ahead, Mr. Barley. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't see you. I'm sorry. But you want to let Pat come up first? Come on, Pat. Thank you so much. I'll be brief. No problem. I just want to talk about garbage. Support garbage. <laughs> and Laura and Pat Doyle, Bit, uh, Beach Boulevard. Thank Laura for her efforts. You left Kelly I, and I. I know. I <laughs> forgot. Two people went to the Bayfront Park to clean up on Garbage Day, too. <laughs> I clean the park not nearly as much as I should. I walk it, and maybe once a month I walk it with a big garbage bag. My neighbor Kelly walks it a lot more. She's cleaning up all the time. Can I say, Denise and her husband walk it with their dog, and they try their best. So yes, there are people that do care and try. A lot of people do not. I know Laura and I have talked about this. I have heard so many people say, that's Lacey's job. Mm -hmm. And I know what you mean about the people with the dog bags, because when they had the garbage container on the walking path, that container was yeah. so beyond full. It was disgusting. You're talking about the pooper scooper container where we had the bags? Pooper scooper. You, you, we used to have the little pooper scooper bags there, and people oh, used to pick up their dog poop and try to put the bag with the poop in it back into the hole where the bags were. It was Oh. Really? I mean, we removed them all. It was like this Come stuff up. up. They would fill it up to the point where it was overflowing, falling on the ground. They would put them, like decorate the garbage can, oh, yeah. like decorate them, put them. And, and I looked at it and it would rain on it and yeah. then it really got disgusting. Right. One day I was walking and I said, this is it, I've had it with this garbage can. And I was picking it up and my neighbor actually yelled out of her house at me, Oh, thank you. I love the bay, too, but that's not my job. No, and I thought to myself, jobs. well, either you love the bay or it's not your job. <laughs> it's one or the other. Actually took pictures of me doing that and sent them to Veronica. I under that, that can was a problem. It was where it was. I think they relocated. I thing. think yes, it would really. They did. Well, it's down in the south exit by yeah. night. Mm -hmm. We could use a second can okay. on the walking path. All right and it would help the people who are responsible. And oh, shout out to the Rotary Club. They were cleaning up the rail trail. And also there was a man cleaning up that little patch on Beach Boulevard. It kind of faces the lagoon where the Elks have all their docks. Okay. It looked like he might have been from the Elks. Elks. Yeah. So maybe the message is getting out. But we could use a second walking garbage can like halfway up the walking path. And I looked, and we have another easement there, because I think another problem was the w right front, it was the waste, the pickup, the people that had to drag those cans. Yeah, because uh, we had to have a certain pro container down there, because all of the birds would get into it. So, yeah. so that's not a problem. If we did one at the end of the easement, mm -hmm. it would make it easier for waste. And I know sometimes some of the garbage, it's disgusting. Mm -hmm. it, and it comes from all over. So yeah. when people say that's the town's job, it's I just not. want to say to them, will you think it through before you open your mouth? Mm -hmm. Public works is good, and they do try. I see them at the park. They'll do almost anything you ask them to do. With the, I don't know about other parts of the town. With the wind, the prevailing winds down there and the seagulls, it, it, you're never going to keep up with it unless we all try. 
and I'll be quick. The other thing is people need to start putting lids on their garbage cans. Mm -hmm. That is a huge problem, especially where there's a lot of wind. wind. They leave the lids off. They have those kitchen white mm -hmm. flimsy bags. bags. The seagulls are ripping them open. Yep. I looked it up. We have an ordinance yep. about that. And can we please start enforcing it? Okay. So and I think it was. If Mr. you could give us a list, we'd be more than happy to have that enforced. But we have to see the can out there on garbage day. We without see, the if we it. see the or, or if we see if the bags are out there, they're not you supposed. You're to not to supposed to be bags, bags standing alone. They're supposed to be in a in container. Can, right. Bags with yard waste in them, you can have. Yes, correct. Right. 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 <laughs> that is I correct. feel I become a garbage expert. <laughs> yes. I think Mr. Barley Barl. Yes. I don't know. He mentioned once about using more of that little flyer that goes with your tax mm -hmm. bill. Maybe every so often we could also put a reminder out. Mm -hmm. You know, we're here for a clean town and support yeah. it that way also. Right. No, Just thanks, a Pat. couple of no, quick suggestions. That's fine. I wrote them down. Okay. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> and anyone else from the audience? Mr. Ball. Mr. Ball. Good evening, Township Committee. Uh, Steve Ball, Fork at River, New Jersey. Uh, just before I get started, uh, just on your item number 10, uh, you referred to the former Knights of Columbus building site. Why is it not called the Charles Smith Memorial Building? Because when we did enter... Excuse me. Can I get an answer? For it? I I'm asking the committee. I'll gladly ask you. I want an answer from the committee. Can, I'm not asking a township employee. I would please, when I come up, can I please, if you guys don't know the answer, could you refer it to Ms. LeRae and not have her answer my questions? All right, I'll we vote you for guys. you people. Right. We don't vote for a township employee. Okay, I, I, I measure how you answer the questions and that will determine for me and my people to determine who to vote for when you guys come up for election. If you don't know answers and the township employee answers the questions, then that's a problem. So you if you guys don't know the, why it's being called the former Knights of Columbus building and not the Charles Smith because building, if you don't know, then I guess she'll have to answer. Because at that time, concerning this issue, it was still the Knights of Columbus. We have then proceeded to change the name to the Charles Smith Community Hall. But at the time that this originally was done, there was a maintenance bond that had to be put in. It was still called the Knights of Columbus. Okay, so, so the project started, started under before that. the it building became, was renamed. renamed. Yes. Okay. And I'd just like to say one other thing to you. Okay, I'm ready. I, I just want you to hear this. I'm Though you don't want to hear from the township administrator, we are what's considered, we are a weak council, if you want to use that expression. Okay, we're not full-time employees here. She is I, a full-time employee. Okay. So she has the everyday accounting of what's happening in this building and in this town okay. right so yes there are things maybe we don't know every little detail well i figured that it, it was a township bullet I, I, and i'm sure you guys reviewed it somewhat know about or it. talked about it it's just her. she was ready to answer in case we didn't speak up but she okay understood right. But I would like answers, uh, not not particularly from you, Miss Mayor. You, you may it ask could come me from you want. And if the I attorney know it, I will or one of the other committee members. That's right. It's just that I think it's important that we know what we that, know. Well, that the township committee is being paid, regardless of your part time or full time. Mm -hmm. I work part time jobs, and I was responsible for stuff, and I never could use the excuse that I'm only part time, so I I'm don't not know. Using Excuse. I'm letting you know that That's I'm not here. That's not an excuse. No, I apologize. No, I, I, I'm not, I don't want it to be an excuse. I want to respectfully no, address yes. you. No, I don't want it to be an excuse. I'm just saying there okay. are a lot of details that All sometimes right. we don't have everything in front of us. Okay? So that's that's how that goes. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Brown. So um, I have two issues tonight. Yes. 
And, uh, you know, I might not be a little bit late or, you know, but um, I, I've done a lot of, um, I've been provided a lot of documentation on the Charles Smith building, the history of it, uh, the circumstances behind the township uh, acquiring that building. And I just want to refresh everyone's memory. So to make sure we're all on the same page, because I hear a lot of different things, and it's hard for me to determine what is fact and what isn't fact. So uh, my, my, my issues is, and also the fact that I am a member of the Lacey Historical Society. Okay. okay. Um, the sale of the Charles Smith Building and Property and the sale of the Veteran Wharton House, which I understand the township does outright own that building, and the second issue is the current financial status of Lacey. Uh, getting back to the first issue, as a, as a member of the Lacey Historical Society for seven years and a Lacey resident for over 60 years, I feel it is my duty as a member of the Lacey Historical Society is to fight for the preservation of all remaining Lacey Township buildings, statues, artifacts, etc that are part of the history of this building, of this township. Even when you look around this room, there's a lot of historic pictures in this room. So they got to have some kind of significance and importance. And as a member of the Historical Society, I strive to make the museum better and to obtain artifacts, original artifacts from Lacey Township and make the museum a better place to visit. I believe that, you know, being a member of the Historical Society, and I'm a little upset that there aren't more Historical Society members here, but I understand they don't want to have a conflict with the township because we got to work together. And, you know, the way I look at it, whether you got to work together or not, you should have an open forum to discuss things that have historical significance that we're really interested in preserving. And that includes the Wharton House and the Charles Smith Memorial Building. As far as I'm concerned, it's not right to sell any historical site or building for the sole purpose of adding taxable parcels to let for Lacey Township. These buildings, such as this building here, are in prominent positions within the town, just like the Charles Smith building. They took the cannon away from here, there. And I always like to ride by there, and it made me proud to look at the cannon and see the building and the flag. Now I understand the cannon's out here. Also, there is a rumbling in the township about the action of transferring a Charles Smith name to the Knights of Columbus building. And whether or not the trans, uh, tra uh, uh, transfer of the name violates the Charles Smith deed. And one thing I'd like to ask, do we own the former Knights of Columbus building or do we have a mortgage or bonds and we don't own it? Does anyone know that answer? Well, we own it, but we have a mortgage. Okay. Can I ask how much the mortgage is? Um, we don't have, we don't, we don't don't have a mortgage. No, we paid that off. No, no, yeah, we don't have a mortgage. Okay. We bond. We bond. We bond. I'm sorry, that was so, my statement, yes. No. We still got to pay the bond off? Yes. So technically, it's no, it's, do, it's, we have, do we have the uh, title? Steven. Yes, we're, we have we own the building. We do not have mortgages. We have bonds. bonds so it doesn't matter whether we have the whether so, the, doesn't let me finish. It doesn't ahead. matter Sorry, whether Steve. the fire truck is bonded or the uh, Knights of Columbus building is bonded. It's a bond. So we owe the money back on a bond, not specific to the, that building. Do you know how much that is? No. So I said we only we took out of a million dollars. That's what we it's it's, it's sure lump sum. Market. We do lump sum bonding, meaning that when we bond something, we borrow. Okay. It could be. No, let me finish. It Go could ahead. be two fire trucks, three police cars, this building, right. the f fixing the dam out in Bamber. It all becomes one lump sum bond. So then we owe that money back. It's not specific to any one location or item. Okay. Is there any money owed on the Charles Smith building or complex? I just told you. Yeah, it's no Charles Smith, not not the not the Knights oh, of Columbus, the, the the real one, the old the real one. No, no, no. 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 
Okay. Just checking. I didn't know whether there was a mortgage on there. I know you, the township only paid a dollar for it. Uh, furthermore, the Charles Smith Building, the original one, which we now refer to as the People's Building, was purchased by Lacey Township Committee for $1 in 1934. Does anyone on the committee know why the township only paid $1 for the building and that property? Stephen will answer. No, I'm not sure. No? You don't know. You don't know. Is Veronica allowed to say anything? Oh, yeah. no. Look, you're the mayor. I'm I, not. I have to, it, it, again, it was a, a big gift bequeathed in the gentleman. Right. And it was to be used for community involvement, education, gathering places for members of the Lacey Township community. You are exactly right. It was gifted to the township for the benefit of the Lacey Township citizen. citizens. Now, does that expire? Or is it still active? Well, we transferred through title research. We transferred it, and we still provide the community with a gathering place. It just happens to be across the street now at 15 East Lacey Road instead of 101 North Main Street. I understand it's your position that the transferring of the name to the Knights of Columbus building excludes and terminates the deed that says that that building was for the exclusive purpose of the benefit of the citizens of Lacey Township for social education gathering events, memories of things that would happen in life and having the place to have it at. So I respectfully disagree that that was proper to switch the name to a new building when I don't believe the deed, everything I read, and I'm not a complete expert, I'm pretty good though, everything I read, there was nothing to say about transferring the name in order to sell the property. Now the property was paid for for one dollar, it was a gift. Now the township wants to sell it for 1.5 million, is that correct, or 2.9? I'm not sure on the number. 1.5. And what does the township plan to do with the $1.5 million, and what do they expect is going to be built on the corner if it's bought? Is it, is, is it, has it been purchased? As, as we stand right now. So, <laughs> so uh, we're we're hoping by the end of this week that 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 situation will be taken care of. Okay, and yes, as far as what we'll do with that money, I mean, there's no like we're not just going to go spend well, it. I it's going to right. But the first thing we will do is if we have any outstanding money on the 15 East Lacey Road site with the bond, that, that gets paid off first. The uh, Knights of Columbus. Yes. Building. Yes. Yeah, so we would we would um, satisfy that bond and pay that bond off first. Which is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. No, we no. borrowed a million dollars. The, the, the part of the bond. I thought someone said the part of the bond no. for that building. No. Okay, so you're going to pay the whole bond off. Whatever's left on the bond, we which would pay which off. attributes the other parts of the uh, township also. No, right? because no. It, when you go for a bond ordinance, all the projects that you're bonding for are listed, and there is a value in the bond ordinance for each particular project, whether it's cars or boats or property or whatever. Right. And then, then there's an amortization schedule listed in the notes for the bond ordinance as to what you're applying it to each year as we make our annual bond payment. So whatever's left will be paid off, and our CFO will have that information and get that from our um, bonding company, uh, Phoenix Advisors as to what the va what the leftover bond is. Mm. Well, I respectfully disagree with the township's position. That mo that money should be used in a way that benefits the township people. And uh, it is being used. Well, it is. People. It is, and it isn't. Uh, a question: Does selling does selling the building and the property violate the one dollar deed? And if it does, and it, a buyer is found and it's contested is the township going to be caught in some kind of legal circumstance where now we're paying for 
legal representation for the township regarding the validity of the one dollar deed i think our township attorney can answer that I answer. It's, subject, it's, it's subject to a title insurance it has could title. you speak up a little bit mr title insurance title insurance correct they'll have to pay for anything correct. Can I, can I interject something here, Mr. Ball, if I could? Of course, through the go, mayor. Ahead, go right ahead. Thank you, Mayor. You know, we're talking about a couple of different things. I don't want to conflate and get, get into the weeds with it. We made an upgrade, in my opinion, because I sat up here for 11 years, and one of the things that I don't like doing that I know you don't like doing is throwing good money after bad. I loved that community hall. I've been there for many, many different things, whether it be for, for family or civic groups at the corner of Lacey Road, the old community hall. However, that costed a, I don't have it in front of me, and I should have in anticipation of you. I'll bring it to your next meeting, yes. please. Yes. The amount of money that we had to put in there in either roof, maintenance and repairs each year, let me finish, for HVAC, not, not only has there been an upgrade across the street, it's more ADA compliant across the street. There's a ramp. We have two senior communities here. People can wheel a chair up into it. It's newer. It's more efficient. You can have a conference there. You can see a PowerPoint there. We've had veterans. I've already been there with, with Mayor Giuliano and other members of this committee. Um, we had something there recently where our, our rec department was there with the artwork for the, uh, the, the, the veteran. Yep. So there's, there's not been a lapse in service. Everything you talked about, that this is for the benefit of the town, the civic groups, educational outreach, that's all still happening. It's happening in a newer location that doesn't cost as much to maintain. I'm not gonna let the town fall down and we're not gonna have a place for our, for our JCs or our Moose or, or, or a civic community or a child with cancer. Th that, listen, I've gone to Celebrations of Life over there. That's for you. You wanna book it, you can book it. You're talking about the, the new Knights of Columbus correct, slash Charles the Smith the Memorial. Columbus Charles, the Charles A. Smith Community Hall. And frankly, I love the old building. That's a better building. You can use it. It, it's a, it has a better kitchen. It, it has a larger capacity. It's easier to maintain. It costs, we have to take less money out of your pocket to keep it up because it's newer. So I'm, at, I'm trying to appeal to your sense of fiscal responsibility. Something else that I think you all should be very aware of. You, you throw the word historical around, you know. And I do, it's, it's, I it's, do. It's a fantastic word. It is. In the aspect of it, but do you honestly know that that they're not registered as historic sites? Well, whose fault is that? Whose fault is it? I don't know. Seriously, whose fault is it? The people that own the building, the township. How Look at the Lacey. Uh, uh, let me ask you this: Is the schoolhouse museum is that on the registry? Why not? A very good question. You're Why not? You're a historical member. You should be asking that I, I'm good. Next meeting, I'm going to have to bring it to the, uh, to the heads of the That's historical a society. That's very important question. Because yeah. technically, that could be sold and knocked down, too. Yeah. That's a prime piece of Lacey Township property. I know there's at least one committee member that's hell-bent on getting rid of everything that's historic, every building he can on Lacey Road and Route 9 and sell it to John Q, whoever, and whatever they put up is fine. And that's not the way it is. You know, the, let me tell you, I did a little research on this building. And do you know that when they built this, this was considered the Taj Mahal of municipal buildings in Ocean County? Yes. yes. And it's still a grand building. Yes. And it serves its purpose. Yes. And I'll tell you, I've been down to the former Charles Smith, but it's on name now, we'll just call it the corner building. We have nicknamed it the People's Building. So I've, uh, you know, I've been around building, and I really looked it out from the outside. The roof is good. It didn't look like it had any structural cracks in the foundation or anything. And the building is viable. It's not a good time to be spending money or selling things that it could be useful for the township. I mean, there are those among us who feel that move the police station to the Knights of Columbus slash Charles Smith building, bulldoze this one or whatever you want to do with it, and then put the money in to refix up 
the former uh, Charles Smith building and, and, and bring it up to the speed. I don't know how many years things get old. They got to be updated. How like I said, in my, in my career, I spent a lot of time in Pennsylvania going to old municipal buildings to confer with uh, officials and police officers, and all the buildings out there are 100, 150 years old, and everyone's walking around with a smile. So buildings have got to be updated, and if they're done properly, they, the update should last a while. And it, there's a growing number of lazy citizens that want to oppose the sale of that parcel. Appreciate your Amen. Amen. Now, um, I, I want to talk about the current Just finance just like to say to you is he's well over his you well over your I'm the only one I no, no, timed no, other no. people you didn't no, ask no, them no, all right no. I'll come it's back safe. up no no stay there I want to see if there's anybody else that would like to get up and speak so that we take a break from you, yours and this uh, gentleman okay I'll and take then a you break. come back up thank you all right thank you come on up sir Name, sure. please. Name, please. My name is Aniello Piero, and I live in uh, Forked River. Okay, thank you. Uh, speaking about the Charles A. Smith Community Center, there's no alarm system in that building. I'm curious why you don't have an alarm system. We don't have an alarm system in any of our buildings except for the police department. Okay. Very trusting. Hmm. Okay, so my second question is whether or not there is anything new to report or that the public should know about the proposed uh, upgraded municipal complex? No, there is nothing right now. It's, a, it's, we're, it's all on a back burner right now. Why? Excuse me, don't call out from the audience, okay? The, the obvious answer is the buildings are in a state of disrepair or you wouldn't have started it. Right. They continue to be in a state of disrepair and are probably getting worse as time goes on. So when you say we're doing nothing, that doesn't kind of ring the bell. Well, we, we as a committee have decided that we're just going to stop, st take a step back and relook at some things before we, you know, decide on anything at this okay, point. Okay, so let me, let me paraphrase that since elections are coming up. Mm -hmm. You're doing nothing about a problem you know exists. Not a, is that is that what you're telling me? No. Okay. There's not, there's not it's not a problem. Well, we know well, that. Well, listen, de deteriorating way, buildings listen, is I'll not be, a problem. I'll be honest with you. If I had my way, if I had my way, I would start tomorrow building a new police station over on that property. Well, something. That's my opinion. Something. Some strategically thought out. I just gave you the, my thought out, yes. that the tax but we all don't agree on it, so absorb. we all don't agree on it, so we just, you know, we're, we're okay. taking a step back. Okay, so if sometime you had to take a vote on who wanted to proceed and who didn't, would you be willing to do that? Meaning uh, here, yeah. I was taking a vote? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to come up, Mr. Bidnick? Good evening, um, Mayor and committee members and Lacey citizens. I just want to remind everybody, when you destroy your history, you have no future. Okay, that's how I'm beginning our talk tonight. So uh, basically, it's wrong what you're doing. It's bringing shame to this body. You're not honoring an agreement that was given to the town uh, and that in 1934 that the government body agreed to. I don't care about the maintenance of the building. The maintenance of the building should have been taken care of. You spent a million dollars to buy the Knights of Columbus building. You should have spent that money, put it into the facility that you have because it does have historical significance and we don't have barely anything left of historical buildings in the town. I speak to a lot of people. You, you, we've been posting things on Facebook. People are in agreement with how we feel. As I said, it would be very helpful for you people to start putting surveys out about how people really feel about the job that you're doing and about what we want for our community. Another thing I wanted to mention up about the Widbits and the lake, something I don't, really don't like, but since you're gonna do it, and since everything is so expensive now with 
uh, inflation. What about people who can't afford to go and have to spend, what is it, $10 to mm -hmm. use that? Mm -hmm. um, what about that? Uh, what about, because, it, and now everything's getting more expensive, taxes are going up um, all over the place, and what are we doing about that for our community? I mean, I pay taxes. I don't really get anything for the taxes that I pay, but people who have children. Excuse me, I'm not going to interrupt you on you. You don't get nothing for your taxes? Well, I'm going to tell we you that. We have firemen, EMS. Right. Thank God I don't yeah. have to use that, and I've only used the police but, department but, but twice. But still, you said you didn't get anything, years. but we get a okay. lot of services here. I'm sure a lot of people a lot do, of services. But personally, I haven't had to use. I don't use the recreation. I don't use the lakes. I don't. But um, that's by choice. It is by but choice. But the people of this town have all that at their right, advantage. They do. And I appreciate that. But what right. I'm saying to you is that for the people who are suffering now, and there's a lot of people, do you realize what it costs to buy food for a family of five, to pay your taxes, mortgage? cars, everything else. Is that our fault, though? I want, I'm want. i trying to understand where we play a part well, in this. Because it, is, is partly, that our if fault? we're going to have a recreation department and we're paying taxes as taxpayers, why aren't we allowing the people, at least that are citizens in our town, to be able to use these things for free? Why are we charging them? This is the thing I'm asking. Because we paid for that. Insurance, just the insurance to have on these things, or in general, insurance is very high. So if you, we're talking about a minimum of $10, I mean, I understand everybody can't afford that. Right. I understand that. But you make choices in life. We all have to make choices. I understand. So let me ask you a question. I mean, you're, you're sitting here complaining about taxes, which you usually do. And you're actually complaining, I guess, about that we shouldn't be charging for the Wibbit. Is that what I understand? What I'm so, saying... I, Excuse me. Go ahead. Okay, you're interrupting me. Go ahead. I don't appreciate that. You want, don't you charge $25 for people who aren't residents? I don't know what the fees are. I but yes. Yeah, I think you do. It's right. So yeah. I don't have any problem with people who don't live here paying right. a fee. I obviously don't. But for the taxpayers, I think with the way things are going and the way everything is so expensive, and I'm very concerned about what's going to be happening with the schools and the possible 10% tax increase that we may get stuck with on top of that, which is going to make it unlivable for a lot of people who are on a fixed income. Okay? That's what I'm just saying about that. My second thing is you voted tonight on something that has to do with modernization of the Open Records Act. I want to remind everybody something. This is the one area in the law that we have that gives us a window into what our governments are doing. Anything that would weaken that would mean that we would not be able to have as much access as we need. It's really and, not doing that. Well, oh, what, well, I saw what they were originally were doing, please. Right. But what they were doing was really going to weaken the law. I want to remind everybody that a citizen in this town, Gavin Rossi, who's a very close friend of mine, designed a website. It's called Oprah Machine that literally allows everybody in this state to have access to any state or local community government documents. And it's, you know, we have that, the person is from our community that designed that. I'm shocked tonight to see that you guys are voting for anything that has a change, anything that doesn't include, make it even more available. And I mean, anything that would take away from our ability to be able to view what our government is doing is a real, real negative. And I do want to mention something else. Last meeting we were here, um, the clerical union people were here, okay? Um, and this has happened when I've been at the school uh, board meetings also, when contract stuff comes up. I really don't appreciate these groups coming to our public meetings and then bringing their dirty laundry, whatever that may be about their contracts or whatever. There's a negotiating team that they have and there's somebody who they deal with with the town. And that stuff should be done in private. I mean, I understand you're probably holding the line. That's why they were here, and I appreciate that. But the fact of the matter is, is that it's not appropriate. Did you tell them that while you were here talking to them? No, I there? didn't. Uh, see, maybe you could have, because because if it comes from us, it's like we're telling them they can't come here. No, um, you know, what I'm, I'm not saying, saying it's that I'm, type of thing. The point is that it's just not appropriate. Right. I mean, they probably have a public right to come and do this, right. but they I do. find it it's not positive, and it makes it's like they're trying to get sympathy for whatever, and you know. Personally, I'd like to know, what are we paying for health insurance for the employees of the town? Like, what is it if it's the family plan? What is it, Veronica? It's on the plan. A, well, yeah, a sing, uh, a sing, I, should, I shouldn't use the word single. A standalone family plan like a, a, that a family would have, depending on the type of coverage you have. And there's, I believe, six different plans. The richest plan is about 43400 
and the cheapest plan is probably around 30000 for family, just for family coverage. Right. And what about a single person? A single person, um, 15000 and change for the richest plan and 9000 and change, I think, for the lowest plan. Okay. So what happens if you take the lowest plan? Well, well it's just like anything else. It Do they get the compensated for the difference? I'm, no, 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 no. Okay, no, so there's no, not like the teacher's the contract. No, they no, have. Nice. Yeah, right. No. Okay, so so basically, it's it's to fit their needs of what they they, right. they so basically may want. Right, so your are different, and what what is covered, whether it's 100% covered or 80 or 60, 40, and there's different types of um, things that might not be covered as much as others in the richest Correct. plan. You know, mental health and stuff like that. I understand. That. One of the questions that I have, and that question is something that to inform the public. You know, when when, when contracts are negotiated, and I've de dealt with the unions myself as a director, so I know how this works. Um, there's always the hidden costs that are never talked about. There's sometimes even more than the salaries of the employees. And, you know, we're paying for that as taxpayers. So, and it is, it's, it, you know, it needs to be talked about, and it needs to be brought out into the open. Like, you know, oh, we're just not giving them $12 or $14 an hour. It's probably $30 an hour when you add the insurance costs, Social Security, unemployment insurance, pension costs. Mm -hmm. So this is a big burden, and it continues. And that's why I'm saying as the town grows and the more people you buy bring in to work, it costs the taxpayers even more. And that's why I have issues about growth levels and containing growth in our community, not only for the traffic, but for other reasons dealing with that. Mm -hmm. So um, I just wanted to, because you know, when we were here, I was going to stand up and say something that night, but I was, you know, I didn't do it. But I am bringing it up now. Now, what do we actually pay full amount? It's in the budget for health insurance costs for this current year. Or, but your new budget's going to be starting, so. Okay. I don't have that number off the top of my head. Um, I might. I, you do? Okay, can you look that up for me? Continue. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm curious about what the full cost is, and what about the pension contribution cost? Stephen will be able to get that as well, which five, is set by the state. Again, a preliminary number of $5.5 5 on health insurance. And that's for retirees and current. And how many employees do we actually have on the payroll right now? Do you know, Veronica? Oh, well, when you say employees, are you saying all employees, or do you want full-time, part-time, whatever? Well, well over 200 if you count everybody. All right, but what about full-time that would be eligible for the pensions and the health benefits? Okay, so, so, so okay, um, I think there's like 117. 117, Okay. All right. So 5.5 million. And Steve, what was the pension contribution, pension, pension costs? 4.5 million. 4.5 million. No, is that right? I don't know if that's right. 5.5 and 4.5. Uh, well, these are preliminary. These, okay. I don't have the five. Oh, okay. Okay. So they could be adjusted. Okay. A and bit. do you oh, happen right. to know off the top of your head uh, the total salary cost? I mean, for wages. 14, 15 million. All right, so on 15 million times 7.65% is what they have to pay for Social Security, right? Yes, 7.65%. So 7.65% of that 15 million also, which is another million point two, million point three, plus unemployment compensation. I mean, these are the hidden costs that, you know, everybody needs to think about, including the unions. I mean, seriously. It's like, you know, when you work in the public body, you know, there's nice things that go along with these jobs. They're nice places to work for the employees. They have all kinds of things. It's not like you're going to be like, you know, working in a factory or something like that. So these are they're give and take when you're a public employee. And this is the point that I'm trying to make is just that, you know, as things are going to get tighter, as inflation keeps going, we need to be mindful of. And I, you know, it's just an education thing because I've had to deal with this, so thank I, you, I kind of know. Thank you, Mr. I believe the five minutes are up. Yes. Okay. I thank do want to address. Okay. This, so go back to the Wibbit. The um, go right ahead. So anything that we do, including charging for ten dollars, um, despite everybody paying their taxes, are, these are all business decisions. No more than the business decision selling any property that we own, if we just, if we choose to do so. We also own the township marina. So what you're sort of advocating is saying that whoever has a 
boat slip in a township, they're a township resident, that they should be getting a free boat slip. That's essentially what you're saying. I and didn't say that. Well, well you're saying that a rib so you're saying that you everybody pays taxes on the Wibbit that they shouldn't be getting charged. That's what you're essentially I saying. That situation. I'm talking I'm, about for the children now. Okay. I'm. I'm. This I'm, I'm kids. Is, well, so I'm again, we, so as a township, yeah, we can't stop? separate. Yes, right. we can't separate out from children or seniors or well, anything else. We have to. You could say you're not going to charge for people who are residents so, to so use the, it. So then, so what you say? So we're not going to charge residents to have a boat slip. Is that what we're doing now? I did not say that. Well, I'm asking now because I said because you're advocating for free services. Particular item. And I'm, and I'm bringing up the children. I know, in our and I'm bringing up my particular item then. Okay. So, so the point of I don't have an opinion. My opinion is no. I'm talking about the kids and that item. It's, it's paid for, right? It's all paid off, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I'm, and I'm arguing. Yes. I'm, I'm not trying to argue. I'm pointing out the hypocrisy of your statements. When <laughs> we look at these things, we look at it from a global perspective on the township. You are saying that you're paying too much in taxes. However, please don't charge anybody to use the Wibbit. Right. And I'm saying we do the same thing on the on on the township marina we have to uh, we yeah, this year we've authorized one mil one million dollars one million dollars to repair the bulkhead at the township marina there is a there's just like you have your discussions around town i've had discussions around town as well there are a great many people that do not think we should be in the business of running a marina we're a township why should we be running a marina for and i think there's like 90 slips so we're basically running the marina for 90 people whether they're in town or not out of town right so it's the same argument. So these are business decisions that we make, and that's how we come to the, you know, we, if I we address all the, we get all the information, and then we try to come, with a, come up with a consensus. So that's how we came up with the $10 to charge for the women. I, I wasn't even questioning. I'm just, why are we charging? I just told you. Because it costs right. money to, to have employees, to staff, But you're going to have to pay insurance on that property anyway. But, 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 you have but lifeguards you... there to swim if someone drowns in the lake. I mean, there's all these things. What I'm saying is it's all encompassing. And I just think that there needs to be some thought about this. It's like, you know, it's just, if you're going to charge people a tax level, we need to question what are we actually getting out of it? Okay, I don't have any kids in the schools. Again, again, that's you right. That's your decision. No, no, you no. Say, These Correct. are all decisions but you make. We're paying a huge amount of money to that body, right? Okay, so people are paying for that. Then they have. You know, but that's that's life. It's history. It just keeps happening. It doesn't matter where you well, live. You're I'm still tell paying you when I grew taxes up, I'm for your tell school you where system. I it goes on everywhere where, you go. When I grew up, excuse me, I'm speaking. When I grew up, we had recreation in the summer. We never had to pay for it. No, but that was 50 years oh, ago. Of course, it doesn't work like changed. that anymore. I'll tell you, when, when I grew up here with Lacey Recreation, we didn't have to pay for it either. I think we haven't had to pay for it. That, that camp program in mid 2000s well, throw is this when out we there. started to charge it's five dollars and 14 cents a day is what it comes to for to professional to people a, a licensed rec director trained camp counselors to ensure and give an enriching experience to a child five dollars 14 cents a day uh, there's not another pay, township 75 dollars 175 bucks there's not yeah, another you know township well, well, but, but there, 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 wait, 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 wait. there is a contingency plan right. for those that may not be able to afford it that is reviewed by the recreation director and taken out of a trust fund okay thank yes. you for answering and that if question. you have multiple kids and some families do have very large right. kids yeah they're, they're, it's like a flat rate that you get charged if you have over right. x amount of kids so that they okay. don't charge for each kid so there okay. are programs out there All right well thank you yes for educating me on no problem thank you very much okay thank you come on up mr bender see mr borrell i told you there was other people that wanted to talk <laughs> <laughs> Barry Bender, I'll say it again, somewhere in Lacey Township. Um, I was going to speak about one thing that's going to come second now, though. Um, Mayor, you brought up the point that um, none of these buildings are registered. Um, the Warden House is in the process of being registered. It's being held up right now because I need to get into the building and have people answer questions for the people who do the work to get it registered. So if that doesn't happen before the building gets knocked down, then I wasted my time trying to get the building registered to let you know. Okay. But I'm saying all these years. I, yeah, well, all I, these I years. Just wanna be, I wanna be all these years, if the building was owned by, I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. If the building was owned by the township committee, okay, or by the township. Not by the township committee. It's by the by township. The town, yes. By the town. Then it should have been done because right. these are historic buildings. Right. Sorry, really if I'm not mistaken, didn't you, didn't you say in 2006 you try to put the, the warden house to put on the register at a, at a meeting? No, I just okay. started. I made a mistake. I, th I came here and I mentioned, I, okay. I stated when I did that. Okay. I brought that, I brought it up. No, no. Um, 
to let you know also, the, the uh, Schoolhouse Museum is owned by the township. The Historic Society uh, rents it for a dollar a year, and I'll be working on getting that registered because it needs to be registered. We need to hold on. And I'm going to make a, a comment, okay? Yeah, it's business, okay? But there are families that have been in this town since before the 1900s that know these buildings and are familiar with these buildings, and there's heritage there. And part of a town also is heritage. So knocking everything down that's old and putting new things up, as far as I'm concerned, is spitting in the face. Can I just ask you, Mr. The, ben? I have, a, I have a, a calendar that was in my house when I moved in. The person who lived there left it we for me. We haven't knocked them. No, 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 but I'm saying there's very little left, okay? Right. No, and, so and to I take more that. down, as far as I'm concerned, is you're destroying the heritage of the town. And I'm talking from heart, not from business no, at this no. point, okay? Granted. Granted. That's why I'm doing the things that yes. I'm doing, all right? So um, I think both of those buildings, when I moved to this town in 1988, okay, there was a whole row of homes going down Route 9 from the corner of Route 9 going south on the eastbound side. They're all gone. Okay, all these older buildings, and I came to this town, moved into this town, because I had a lot of choices. I was moving back from Pennsylvania. I lived in Pennsylvania for one year. I escaped back to New Jersey, thank you. And, and I came to, to Forked River, Lacey Township, and I said, hey, I like how this town looks. This is where I want to live, and it keeps changing and changing and changing. And I know you have to move forward for some things, but you can't forget your heritage completely, and that's why I'm doing the things that I'm doing, just to let you know. Also, just to let you know, we have put a big investment into the um, Historic Society building this year. We've been working very hard with our DPW over there, taking care of a lot of things on right. our property. But you so, may not be sitting up there forever, okay, and we need to get it registered so if somebody does come up there and decides, hey, and just, we want to use that property. Just a little side note, because, you know, people think you don't care. I'm, I'm the one who basically about two months ago called somebody from there and said to them, Get on it. Yeah, well, we're, it's, okay. going, it's getting work done. I'm in touch with people. Um, but what I really came to speak about was um, Resolution 2024-128, calling for the, as they refer to it, modernization of the o Open Public Records Act. Yes. Uh, with, on the first reading, I was in Trenton, and I testified in front of the Assembly Committee, and I'll say to you what I said to them. Um, people, in a large part, have lost faith in their government, okay? And it's shown by the turnouts that we get in our elections. Last election in Ocean County overall, we had a 20% turnout. Mm -hmm. And the more that government does things, and as far as I'm concerned, what they're doing here, okay, is trying to take transparency away from what the people can see and what, what can be done, you're going to have turnouts of 10%, 5% or less because the people are going to turn away more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So supporting, as far as I'm concerned, supporting that bill is a big mistake. I'm probably, tomorrow's Friday, I'll be in Trenton tomorrow testifying in front of the assembly saying the same thing. So Can, can I just have a few... Uh, Go ahead. With regards to Oprah, since myself and, and mm -hmm. um, Ms. Ms. McGuckin deal with it constantly, as you know. And we, we don't have a problem being transparent and putting records out there. What I have yeah. a problem with is the ambulance chasers. Right. that call and want every police report and want every video camera and want every this so now they can reach out to you who just was in a recent car accident, okay? Right. I have a problem with the building companies and the building supply companies that want a particular list of all the building permits issued and who issued them and who didn't issue them. And now we have Daniel's Law, so now we have to redact certain other things for people that can be on it. It is becoming a full-time job for more than just one in employee person. here right, as to what they want. So those are the kind of things that need to stop that the businesses are using us to make money off of it by us doing the work for them to gather the records. Again, you get vets wanting a list of all the dog licenses and all of that kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff that needs to stop. Right, yeah, but I you got to be you got to be careful, right. okay, that you're not throwing the bad expression, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right. okay? So if you you clamp down and people can't get information, people are going to say, "Oh yeah, there goes the government again. They're keeping <laughs> secrets they're not telling us," okay? Any any uh, uh, vision of or, or, or uh, you know,
characterization of, hey, they're trying to keep information from us. Well, it's going to turn people off more. I understand that. And you're completely right. People have lost faith in their government. You're 100% correct. Right. But again, it, it's those businesses that are trying to make us be their workers to do the business for them. And they, and they ask you for it. We want it in a particular format and this way, done by Excel, so we can sort it and do it. I mean, it's, it's amazing what we see and what we get, that we have to now take time to do all of this for right. them so they can make money in their business instead of finding another way to do the research. You no, know, it's just like the police, though, seriously. They don't get to do their job. Well, the amount of paperwork that they have it's, to do. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's absolutely I mean, a body-worn but, camera, one hour, and if you, have, you know, a, a body-worn camera, you've got three police officers at a scene. I mean, that police officer, it could take 10 to 12 hours to review all those cameras because those cameras are at different angles. And again, you put your driver's license out, that has to be redacted. You have children there, that has to be redacted. You know, all those things to protect well, people's privacy. And that takes a long time. And then you have those people that do not come in and pick it up after you do all the work. Yeah. No, I under, understood, but again, mm -hmm. the, the, the um, I forget the proper terminology, the but the, of the, law. The, the, the vision that, hey, you're holding information back from us is not a positive thing no. today, especially the way things are going on today. Mm -hmm. So I'll be in Trenton tomorrow. Uh, you Thank you much. Up. Thank you, Mr. Bender. Anyone else? Nope. See <clears throat> you were close. You were almost there. If Mark was here, we would have got it. <laughs> Mark was here, we would have got it. <clears throat> An encore performance. Uh, Steve Ball, Fork of River. Second question. Uh, I, I just want to reference the last meeting I was at, you had your township accountant here, the young lady. Yes. And I asked her a, a simple question, was the township in the red or the black? And I'd like to give the uh, uh, township an opportunity for the next meeting to answer questions about where we stand financially and whether or not the township, because the rumor I hear, and I can't confirm it because I don't have the records and I can't find it online, is that the township is $19 million in debt. And I just want to know if that's a fact or not. You don't have to answer it now. I'm going to be at the next meeting. And I do want to ask whether or not Johnson's been paid the penalty fee of 238 or whatever th thousand dollars. First of all, on our website, I believe our audit was supposed to be up, so you might be able to see all that information. You know, the website's a little tricky. I'll look at it again tonight, it's but I'm trying to find what I see is a lot of stuff from 22, maybe 23, not really up-to-date stuff, where there's a running record of the township has this much money, we're investing this much money, we have a debt of this much money, and, and just the formula of where the township stands on the financial footing. Because there could come a day when they drop a bomb on us and say, oh, we got to get rid of all this debt. There is a provision in the tax law that allows allow townships to eliminate debt that's been accumulating over years. And it usually happens when a new group of committee people get in. They don't want to drag that ball and chain any further. They want to eliminate it. And how they eliminate it is that provision in the state law, and I, Ms. LeRae had brought it up once before, that that debt could be eliminated through raising the taxes in the township. So I just want to know how long, how big the ball and chain is. And I'm going to come back to the next meeting and ask okay. that. On okay. The website, there is also what's called an annual debt well, st statement and an talk. annual financial statement, which is done as of December 31st of 2023. Those are the documents that are supplied for the public. There's also, again, the annual audit which lists all of our bonds and where we're at with all of our bonds that you can look at. Those are the documents we can supply to you. Okay. You, you might be completely right, but there's a lot of us, especially us that are getting older in life, that don't have the ability to, to wander all over a website. Well, and I can't see why like the circumstances of, of the financial status of this township cannot be discussed in an open meeting to the public in this forum. 
that we shouldn't, the answer is run to the website. I disagree with it. I understand it is a way to look at things, but I think it's very important that that information is also verbally uh, given and, and be known to the township uh, citizens. That's all I'm saying. I, I understand it might be on there. You with copies. Whatever you and want. I won't even charge you for them. Just stop in and we'll give you copies. I, I would rather discuss it at the meeting. Well, then when so you, and have you copies and you come up with your questions, discuss. come back. Yes, get the copies. That way you have them. You can look at it, get the information, and then ask us questions about it if you'd like. The okay, where am I getting this copy? Come in tomorrow and get copies. Should I do it? Yeah, yes. I'm yes. not going to get the runaround like no, no. I did with the, uh, the, the working and, and updates. Of this. Of you. I'm sorry, I didn't use your merit name. I'm sorry. Okay, so what's, what's going to be on this paper? I'm going to get you the annual financial statement, which is probably 40 or 50 pages, the annual debt statement about the same, and the audit is, I don't know how many pages it is, but it's quite voluminous as well. Okay. So you stop yes, in tomorrow is. and get I'll it. I'll even give you a copy of the budget, too. Yes, it is. Would you like that? <laughs> I'm willing. Hey, to you know what? You, and I are on the you know what? The more I get, the better it is. Knowledge yes, is I'm power. I'm really happy to supply it all. I like to know everything. Okay, thank you. I'll thank see you, uh, someone tomorrow, see I guess. See Amy tomorrow. Okay. Be, remember to be nice, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he can't promise that. Yes, yes. Okay. I have one comment, too. Okay. Regarding the... Laura, can you do me a favor and spell your last name? Because I'm not getting it right. S-C-H-E-T-E-L-I-C-H. Thank you. I knew I didn't have it right. <laughs> Um, so I know the next meeting is only two weeks away, and I was just wondering if there was going to be, like, if, if you're going to come up with some kind of plan to reach out to make a list of the groups. Well, that's what I said to you earlier. Yeah. I said okay. that I, I put it on my list right here. I'm going to make okay, Veronica great. and I get together tomorrow. I'll, we'll put an email mm -hmm. out basically to all the groups in town, Boy Scouts, Girl whatever Scouts, we whatever we have contact of, right. and we'll put it out to them. Okay, and then when I first decided to do this, you had said that you as a town would like to take on this project as a yearly thing, maybe like a one day thing, like let's clean up Lazy Day like I did. Well, we could make up, a, right, we could, I said to you, we could make a day that yes. we make it like this is so Lazy Day. Adopt right. the highway sections, right. but right. also an actual make a day. Make a day, maybe yes. Maybe spring, summer, winter, fall, four yep. times a year. Um, and then um, the vegetation meeting that we um, we are trying email we went are out trying to just a handful of people. Okay, it's the only email addresses that I had okay, on file, no, and right. I asked them to please share it with whoever may not be but, uh, on or, the list. So I already I told her though when I spoke to you, I said yeah. to you as soon as I get a date, right. even though you weren't on the email list, that I would be in touch with you and give you the date. Okay, so I'm maybe put to... on Lacey Chatter or something like oh, that, could, so yeah. the whole town can see it. Yeah, I, it, I, I was planning on having a to the entire town. Yeah, I was planning on having a flyer and posting it on Chatter, but I'm waiting for a Britta for, um, from St. Barnegat Bay. Yeah. Listen, me to go out there and have a vegetation meeting with you is not going to get anybody anywhere because I don't know about all the plants that are the proper for the bayfront. So we're looking for a uh, landscape architect and those kind of ideas and botanists and stuff like that and um, individuals you know, with regards to turtles and stuff like that to come and make it a very informative meeting. I do have. Um, money through clean communities program that I could utilize it. So let's say we could do a community replanting and revegetate that area. Maybe we need to change out some of the grass or whatever and put proper plants down there, something that's hardy that we will stick around. Right? So we do have clean right. communities money that we could utilize to do something like that. And maybe all of us as a community can come and plant instead of just public works doing it. Right. And maybe kind of bring everybody together because I know there's two sides down there because I've been hearing from both sides. Yeah. Because okay. May 1st is here. When I see what, what they cut down there, and you know, I don't think they realize what they're doing. Okay, and I answered your question when you asked me if we were doing any mowing. I said to you, all they're supposed to do right now is just widen the area of the walkway a little yeah, bit. Why is that? Because we're, we're getting complaints about people. <laughs> it's endless. It's they can't walk past each other because yes, there's not enough room yeah, for them to walk. Yeah, and and if somebody trips, we get sued. So we'll, we'll we need hopefully we'll get a new plan. Right. We're going to put a new plan together. We're going to put a new plan Cut together. some down, it grows back. Okay. You have no, no idea no. the law. Because you said it before. You said it's dangerous. Don't, you Explain to me. It. I just want to know how. It's fine. I could talk. No, it's please. Fine. Tell me how that's dangerous. Tell me how a plant is dangerous. No. Okay. I'm going through the mayor. You said it every time I've gotten up. You said it's a danger. I'm going. Now, what's really a danger? after we cut everything down and the kids can now see this 
rock, rock wall and how tempting it is to climb on it, that's dangerous. Mm -hmm. She's absolutely a plant right. is not. Right. Yep. That's all. all right. We're going to get there. We're going to get there, there Laura. I, yes, Mr. Bender. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> the, the, the people at the state that handle historic buildings have questions that I need to get answered. Is there someone I could talk to? If I have, have hire someone to go in that's an expert to go into the warden house, what's the ruling on that? We'll discuss it. We'll, <laughs> we'll thank you. It. I'll get back to you on that one, okay? Because okay? that's what I need to do to move things forward, right. just to let you know. I'll, I'll get back to you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm going to need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, real quick, Mr. Bitnick. No, no, wait for this. It's about community hall. By the way, when I was down there the other night, the windows are open. They're not even locked. The, 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 on the, on the, on the lower bottom. level, okay. we could just pull it right down and people could get in there, which okay. could be a problem. We'll have it out. Just so we'll you know. Have it okay. out. Thank, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, oh, wait. Did, did, you want to, did you want to say something, Mr. Kennis? Just, I was going to expound on the debt, but I'll do that at the next meeting. Next but I will, I will just uh, make it a point that I say this many, many times. Excuse me, no talking, me. please. Where'd, where'd the township is run extremely well financially and will be continue Thank to be you, done so. so. Thank you. So to point that out. Somebody do something. Uh, any more comments? Motion, okay. motion to close the floor. Move it. Second. Second. Uh, Aye. Motion to adjourn. Move it. Move it. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. I have one more resolution for executive session. We have executive. Resolution of the Township of Lacey County of Ocean State, New Jersey, Thank authorizing you, the convening of an executive session in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act to discuss per matters of personnel and pending anticipated litigation of matters of real estate. Move it. Second. Mr. Kennis? Yes. Ms. McDonald? Yes. Deputy Mayor Curtola? Yes. Mayor Juliana? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No Aye. further business. Bye, sweetie.